it is me uh, again on the road less traveled and I have to say uh, it is a good day um, I am at the Magnus tree farm uh, outside of Sherwood Oregon and it is gorgeous I'm here with my dog Macy and uh, we are uh, blown away today <laughs> she um, she loves it out here uh, as do I but I'm out here to walk in the presence of God and I want to say <coughs> we'll spend hours and weeks working to try to create a spiritual experience inside of a sanctuary, a church built by a man's hands. A church building, rather. But when you are out in God's sanctuary and creation, you can't avoid a spiritual experience. <laughs> um, this is an amazing place, but the presence of God is spectacular. He is everywhere. Uh, just a few minutes ago, I was, uh, and this is what I want to share with you, I was just stopping in wonder. Well, first of all, do you ever just wonder? Does God ever catch you in wonder? at him. <laughs> that is where I'm at right now. I am in wonder of God. And I'm coming up here and there's a little grove of cedars. And uh, it's a great spot. I love it in here. Everything in here reminds me of God. The life, the way, the breath, the light the wind. <laughs> the leaves. The death. You died. You became human. <laughs> you became one who breathed. And we forget. And when I said I'm here to enjoy the presence of God, we forget that God is our presence. <laughs> Without him, we wouldn't be. By him, all of this was created and is held together. <laughs> By God. And, uh, I just, from the colors To the beauty, the rain, they are all reminders that God is. And I, uh, I always say get out there, <laughs> but there's a reason. You can't avoid God out here. You can't avoid not only an encounter with God, but the ending result is an encounter with yourself. We sit in our homes made of hands and watch our pictures on our TVs. And that is what we have reduced our lives to when this is here. When you are present, we want only our presence. That is self-serving, self-seeking. Help us to seek you, God. When Paul wrote in Romans chapter 2, God will reward those who 
are persistent in doing good, who seek you and your will, your desires, and who reach for everlasting life. And to those people, you will give it to them. But to those who are self-seeking, it clearly says, they will be judged. But you will reward those who are persistent at doing good. I'm standing here at uh, one of my favorite places. I've been here before. I would call this <laughs> the altar for me. It is where I sacrifice things in my life. I have sat here with God many times. <laughs> and laid things down. Well, in fact, it was... A few months ago, I'm trying not to slide on this bark, but it wasn't a few months ago that I stood at this tree, I'm trying to get around it, uh, without falling. I sat under it and talked about losing my job, <laughs> probably four months ago. And here I am on the altar again. <laughs> um... And God has given me clarity to be, oh man, I don't want to steal this line from the army, but to be all that I can be for God, for me, for my family, for my friends, for my community. That is the point to living, isn't it? To be everything you can be for, for those you love and for those who love you. God is leading me, I believe, to uh, do two things. As long as I am able. First is to start a new church, but one that meets in his sanctuary. No buildings, no walls, just in the presence of God in the way that John Muir worshipped God. <laughs> There's no better place but to worship God in His presence and His creation and for His creation. So I am going to start a group uh, I would call The Well. In John 4, the woman at the well came, she didn't come to Jesus, Jesus came to her and revealed himself to her, and revealed who he was. But in doing so, uh, her being a Samaritan and a non-Jewish uh, woman, Jesus talked to her, and uh, knew everything about her. <laughs> and that used to surprise me, it's like some magic trick, but when you realize that God is breath, his presence, his breath, uh, you can read that in from Genesis all the way to the end of the Bible in the book of Revelation and understand that the word spirit means breath. It began with the breath which gave us life and it will end in the breath of the spirit which gives us life. It is God's spirit living within us that gives us eternal life. Wow. Of course it is. <laughs> it is his breath. <laughs> I'm in wonder because the gospel, the good news became so clear. We breathe because the Spirit of God is within us. He is the breath. He is our breath. He is our life.
the only life you can ever have, eternal or present, is through the breath, through living in the breath. <laughs> and when it says we die, we will be in the breath. The word is pneuma, breath. Salvation is not some complicated religious concept that you pray a prayer and you receive it. It is something that you acknowledge that has already been given to you. <laughs> and if you are thankful for that, all God wants for you to do is good. <laughs> That's it isn't complicated it's living a life that helps other people other other beings who exist by the breath and through the breath and in the breath huh. everything in God's nature exists in community birds, <laughs> even lone wolves. <laughs> Everything exists in community, yet we think somehow we can remove, it, remove ourselves from it and feel happiness and joy. No wonder we're so depressed. Life is about community. It is not about your job, your career, so you can get more paper that man printed and said this has value. Life is the greatest value. It is. Ponder that. Life is the greatest value. Live it. Every second that goes by is a second you have spent of the most precious commodity, <laughs> the most valuable commodity, life. The funny thing is we treat it like a commodity. forget its value. I am out here not because God is present here, but because God is presence here. He is the presence.